Welcome to the Laboratory, a video series brought to you by Miracles Innovation Labs. Hi, and welcome to the Laboratory video series, um, a video series brought to you by Miracles Innovation Labs. Uh, my name is Chanakya, and I'll be talking to you a bit about ThinkChat, which is a cognitive chatbot um, that is able to control IoT devices. Um, and it's built on top of a serverless backend. So let's go ahead and get started with kind of talking a bit about um, what ThinkChat is and um, what the um, architectural elements of ThinkChat are as well. So the first thing that we needed was a proper protocol to be able to communicate and um, send commands and also receive status updates from our devices. Um, in this particular case, our devices were going to be a speaker, which could play songs, um, a temperature sensor, um, a fan, and a light. And since these were very um, mundane devices that didn't have their own um, smarts, um, they essentially had to be connected to a device gateway. Um, we used a Raspberry Pi that was running a Python server, um, and it would, it would uh, communicate with these um, devices using um, GPIO. Um, so right now, our mechanism was that we needed some way for our application, or in this case, um, our chatbot, to be able to send over um, commands and receive status updates from the Raspberry Pi, which was acting as a device gateway. And HTTP was not a really good um, uh, protocol that could be used in this particular case um, because it's heavyweight. It's usually unidirectional and it's a pull-based mechanism where the Raspberry Pi would have to continuously pull and send requests over to a server and check if there were any new commands. And this was not um, really the case because we needed to be able to send updates to the Raspberry Pi um, in real time and make those occur. Um, at the same time, HTTP um, would not be good because we had to consider the bandwidth limitations um, for these remote devices. And we also had to make sure that we were understanding that it had to be more bi-directional um, in, in the case. Um, that's where MQTT came. Um, MQTT is Message Queuing Telemetry Transport. Um, it's a protocol specific for the um, IoT use cases. And it's very lightweight to set up. Um, it's unidirectional. It has a persistent connection that allows you to listen to um, uh, updates that are happening um, on a broker, basically. And these brokers have topics. Um, so you can see on the right-hand side, we have a broker with the topic. And um, your applications can consume these, um, can consume messages from the topic. Your devices can consume messages from the topic. Basically, you can have multiple consumers listening on, on one topic. Um, all the consumers um, subscribe to a topic, and all the producers um, publish to a topic, um, whatever is needed. So in this case, our chatbot is publishing messages or commands to the topic. The Raspberry Pi is picking those up and publishing the status back which is being picked up by our chatbot once again to tell the user, um, hey, so-and-so happened on the IoT device. Um, so just to understand the backend piece of the um, demo, which is the IoT piece, um, we have our devices on the far left. Um, the connectivity in our case is hardwired, um, but we have a device gateway, which is a Raspberry Pi that's connected to the Watson IoT platform, which is running our API platform and the MQD broker as well. Um, all of the messages that are coming in are being subscribed to a end-user application. In our case, it's a listener, which I'll show to you in a moment. Um, in this case, we're not logging the IoT data, but we're logging the chatbot data, um, which I'll show to you um, in a couple of minutes. But this is usually um, the anatomy of a, of a regular IoT solution that you would see at a very high level. So just to understand conversational bots a bit before we de uh, deep dive into ThinkChat, um, they're kind of the new revolution after um, enterprise mobility and we're really seeing them boost up because unlike mobile apps where you had to have an app for every company that you wanted to interact with or every use case that you wanted to interact with, um, bots can come into channels where you're already existent like Facebook Messenger, Slack, um, regular text messages and so on. Um, some of the use cases that we're seeing around conversational bots are um, virtual service agents um, on websites or on Facebook or wherever you want to interact with them. Um, being able to interact with your things, um, like devices like Alexa and Google Home, we're able to actually ask for stuff to be done. And also being able to control mobile applications instead of having to type in text or um, press a button, you instead ask in natural language. 
So the entire backend for ThingChat is um, built using serverless technology. Um, serverless doesn't mean that um, the server is gone. It's basically um, something that is called as functions as a service, which means that um, essentially um, everything that you create is a um, stateless service that is only um, that is running on a container that is only started and stopped whenever you need it. So whenever a request comes, um, where uh, it usually gets started and stopped. And most of the times, these serverless functions are um, event-driven in nature, which means that um, not only do you call them using REST, um, you can also trigger them um, using um, events as well, such as a new record in a database, or um, a, a, the crashing of your mobile app, or maybe a message in a queue. So we'll see a bit more about that um, in the next couple of slides. So the platform that we used for this particular um, instance of serverless was Apache OpenWhisk, which is an open source um, serverless platform. Um, we used the managed model of it, which is running on IBM Bluemix, where you don't have to worry about running the actual backend. A um, couple of components that are involved in this are the actions, which are the actual functions that you create. Um, sequences is a mechanism within OpenWhisk where you can actually chain together actions um, together. Um, rules and triggers enable you to um, basically listen in for events and if the event matches your rule, um, it triggers either an action or a sequence. Um, we also have packages that we use. Um, OpenWhisk on Bluemix provides some pre-built packages um, such as packages for the Watson IoT platform, um, Watson speech to text, uh, weather data and stuff like that. We use a couple of those. And you also have a gateway um, where you can expose all of your sequences and actions using um, REST interfaces. Um, in terms of the developer um, experience, um, you can build applications using Swift, Python, Java, um, Node.js, and also you can build them using um, Docker. Um, so you can deploy any existing Docker containers to a serverless platform like OpenWhisk. Um, in our case, we built all the serverless functions using um, Node.js. Um, you can use the CLI to deploy um, your serverless functions, or you can also use your um, use the UI that is available within Bluemix for OpenWhisk also to deploy um, these services. Um, they are based on an agile delivery model, so it's fairly easy to deploy them if you have a script of some sort. But you can also use um, continuous delivery mechanisms also um, to um, build and deploy these onto the platform. Um, in our case, we used a external gateway called API Connect on Bluemix um, to enable our APIs to be exposed um, as managed APIs, which meant that we added security, throttling, and such governance on top of um, all of our backend. So diving into um, ThinkChat, um, as you can see, um, we'll go from left to right. On the left-hand side, you see we built three channels. That was the main intent. We wanted to make sure that our chatbot was multi-channel. Um, so we had text enabled using Twilio. Um, we were able to chat with it through Facebook using Facebook Messenger. Um, and we were also able to build a Ionic mobile app where you could interact with um, the chatbot. So once it comes in through each of the channels, the backend relatively stays the same. Um, you can see that we have an API gateway where we defined um, the API callbacks for each of those channels. Um, some of the examples were that in Twilio when we configured the callback, we had to use get, whereas in Facebook we had to use post. Um, Twilio was actually expecting um, a specific um, specification of XML called TwiML, and Facebook was ex expecting just a HTTP 200 response. So we had to be able to configure um, a single instance of the um, backend um, into multiple um, APIs. So that's where we use the API gateway. And for mobile, um, we had to enable um, authentication and security on top of the API as well. So that was another API that we created um, at the gateway layer. So once we come into our backend, um, you can see the little circles um, that are there. Um, each circle is a um, serverless micro microservice that is running um, on top of OpenWhisk. Um, the light blue ones that you can see are Facebook specific. The red ones are Twilio specific. Um, the um, dark blue ones are the um, ones that are general across all the channels, um, whereas the bluish one um, that you see at the bottom, which is Respond Mobile, is for the uh, mobile application. 
Um, so as you can see, um, each of the APIs doesn't use all of the different chat, um, services that are available. And that's the beauty of having to use something like OpenWhisk, um, because if we're primarily using a lot of the chat using mobile, we're not running any of the Facebook or Twilio specific microservices. Um, this also allows us to reuse a lot of the services and ensure that we can um, make changes across all channels um, at once. So if you can see, Get Conversation is really the service that handles the core business logic of the um, chatbot. Um, so we can actually just convert that and it'll, and it'll reflect back on all the different channels. Um, now, as you can see, we're also storing the context for Facebook and Twilio, whereas we're not doing that for mobile. Um, the reason for that is because mobile allows us um, to handle the state on the client side because we're in control of that. Whereas Facebook and Twilio, we have to maintain the context on the server side. So we're maintaining that within cloud and since all of these services are stateless. Um, so at the bottom, you can see that's where we have the IoT piece. Um, just to make sure that the um, user experience is seamless, we have ensured that the um, chatbot backend um, delegates the um, both the logging of the conversations to a database, as well as um, sending the MQTT messages to two workers, which you can see at the bot bottom are um, in gray. Um, basically, we're, uh, we're publishing um, two messages to two topics. One is logs and one is actions, which are Kafka topics um, running on Bluemix in the Message Hub service. And it runs or triggers um, two open with services, one which logs to Cloudin, all the conversations that we're having with the user, and the other which is um, sending an MQTD message over to the Raspberry Pi using the Watson IoT platform. Um, you can see the Raspberry Pi subscribes to these commands. Um, it runs whatever command needs to be run and then publishes its state which goes back to a listener um, which then um, checks which channel the actual command came from initially um, uses the status from the Raspberry Pi and then publishes it back as a message to those channels so that the user can know um, what occurred with their um, command. So this is just an overview of all the different services that are there within that backend. Um, as you can see, um, a couple of them have a, a number associated, which means that that is how many channels that they're be, being used for. Um, you can see that um, the get conversation um, is the one that is being used by all channels, which means that your central logic, which is applicable to all those channels, is available over there. Um, on the send MQTD one, we mentioned N, which means that um, basically we're not running it unless it's conditional, which means that if there is a question like hello, or um, if they say something like what can you do, we basically do not need to send anything through to the Raspberry Pi since there's no command coming in yet, and that's where send MQTD is not being called. So that should be it. So let's jump into the live demo. So here's the for. Um, Thing chat, um, which is a chatbot that is able to control um, actual things, IoT devices, smart devices. Um, so in this case, you can see on the right hand side, we have the circuit, we have a light, which has Miracle Labs. Um, we have a temperature sensor right over here. Um, this is a control board, which is doing the power regulation. Um, it does sound rectification as well for the um, speakers. Um, we have a fan over here, and we have the actual control unit, which is a Raspberry Pi. Um, the Raspberry Pi is running a Python server, um, which we will go ahead and start off right over here on the right-hand side. So there we go. So basically, it's connecting to, um, you can see it's connected to the Watson IoT platform, and it's actually able to send MQTD messages back to the Watson IoT platform as we were talking about that in the architecture. So I'll go ahead and first showcase to you um, the app that we have. Um, that is able to actually send and receive um, data from what's in conversation and also able to communicate with these devices. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and say turn on the light and you can see the command to turn on the light has been sent and the light was turned on came and the light was turned on over there. If you can see on the left hand side um, the data is coming through and if you go ahead and hit refresh on the open whisk, this is the open whisk monitoring piece, you can see all the actions that are being triggered. Um, these are all individual microservices that are running as a sequence and they're being triggered um, via APIs. Um, so we can also go ahead and let me turn it off so that you can see the rest of the circuit. Turn off the light. I'm typing it, it's not speech to text, but 
Um, so the light is turned off. Um, we can also play a song. So I'm pretty sure you can hear the song. I will go ahead and stop the song. It's only about 10 seconds, so I might stop before I stop it. So I stopped the song. Um, so you can also do different controls of the um, temperature and the fan as well. So for that, I'll take you into um, a different channel. So we built three channels. Um, the second channel that we built is through Facebook Messenger. So you can have a chat bot for um, Messenger where um, it's on your page, basically on a Facebook page. Um, so I can go ahead and say, check the temperature. And the temperature sensor, yep, it's 20 degrees Celsius. The temperature sensor has responded back. Um, and I can also do stuff like um, turn on the fan. And I'll be able to ask me what speed you want to use. Um, I'll say low first. And you can see the fan is turned on. Um, it has three speeds that we can control it at. Um, you might not be able to see the speed, but um, you can hear it. I, I don't know if you're able to hear it over the fan speed of my laptop, but um, you should be able to hear it. So, um, Also, one question that one of our developers had was, um, what happens if I turn it on again? Turn on the fan. Um, it still doesn't know whether it's turned on or not, so it's going to ask me. Um, so the case that we define over here is if it is already running at the particular speed, it won't. But it, since it's already running at low, um, and I type in low, um, it says the fan is already running at low speed, so it can't really um, do much. Um, but we can um, change the speed. Change the speed. Change the fan speed to medium. And you've got to trust me on this um, because you won't be able to really see it. Um, you might be able to hear the fan sound, but um, I don't know if you're able to see that it's running any faster. So I'll go ahead and, oh yeah, to show the last one, um, which would be um, text, I will go ahead and turn off the fan from here. Turn off. And you can see the fan is turned off as well. So um, there's various commands. Um, as you can see in this particular case, we're sending two messages. The reason for that is um, just to be able to showcase that the API and MQDD are both responding back to the um, chat application. But um, um, this is this is the basic principle that the application is built on, is so that um, plugging it into multiple channels is easy. Um, the microservices that we built are reusable, so if you want to re reuse them and plug them into a different channel like um, Slack or Skype or anything like that. It's fairly easy to really plug it in and um, enable those particular um, interfaces also to interact with your um, with your um, uh, things that we built over here. So that's it. Um, thank you. Thank you for watching The Laboratory, a video series brought to you by Miracles Innovation Labs. For more on innovation, please visit miraclesoft.com slash the labs.